Hello, hello. Testing one, two, three. Hi, laser 62. <laughs> I can guess who that might be. How is everybody? YouTube is a little bit laggy when we stream, so I'm going to give it a couple of minutes just to let everybody find it. Um, give me a hello in the comments when you're here. And if you're going to be making along with me today, let me know that you're going to be joining in and I will keep a mental note of who is going to be sewing along with me. And I know I'm expecting a lovely Ange and Darcy and a couple of my sewing boot camp ladies. We shall see. Hi Carol, how are you? Are you sewing along with me today or are you just watching? Good afternoon, Darcy. I know you're all set up and good to go. I saw your Instagram post earlier. Thank you for that. Bernadette's with us. I know she's going to be sewing along this afternoon as well. So there's a few of you, which is great. Who else do we have? There's Ange, she's all ready to sew. Goody good. All right, so while you're joining, I'll just show you what we're gonna be making today. Quite a lot of you um, will have seen these before, especially if you remember way back when, when I used to do craft bears, because these were always one of my top sellers. They make really lovely presents. People often say, what on earth is a tea bag wallet? Why do I need a tea bag wallet? But you will be amazed at the amount of people that carry their own tea bags around with them. Um, but normally just in a little sandwich bag shoved in the bottom of their handbag. Lots of people are very specific about the kind of tea that they like to drink. Um, and these make a wonderful, wonderful gift. So they are basically a little wallet, um, which is a bit like a credit card holder, I guess. You could even use it for that. It just opens up and you can pop either individual packet teas in them or there's absolutely nothing to stop you just putting loose bags in like I have here as well. And um, You can get quite a few in there, I've only put four in, but you can get quite a few in each little pocket. So you can see here, it's fairly simple construction. You've got little individual pockets to put your tea bag in and it's just plain on the front with a little elastic and button fastening. Now you can, I'm going to use a hair elastic to do this, uh, but you can just use a normal piece of elastic as well if you want to, but I just find a hair elastic really nice and simple and easy to do. So I'll run you through what you're going to need to make sure you've got everything first of all, and then I'll come back to the comments and catch up and see where you're at. So the most important thing you're going to need is a cardboard template. Um, and that needs to measure seven and a half inches by five inches. You can obviously just use a ruler and draw it straight onto your fabric, but because I can guarantee you, you're gonna to want to make more of these, it's really handy to have yourself a wallet. This is just a bit of Amazon packaging. Um, so that's the most important thing that you're going to want. I'll leave that there so you can see the measurements while I'm chatting. Um, you're going to want a button about the size of a penny and hair elastic. I say if you haven't got a hair elastic, then a little piece of elastic will do. Um, just tie it into a little loop just for ease um, so it's a similar size to a hair elastic. You're going to want some fabric for your main wallet. I've just got some offcuts here, these are just scrappy offcuts, but you would want a fat quarter. You're going to want to cut out two of these from this, but we'll do that in a minute, so don't rush. Um, so that's how much fabric you need. You're also going to want a plain fabric, um, which you can use inside your tea bag wallet for your little pockets, um, and some interfacing, so iron-on interfacing. The iron-on interfacing isn't essential. If you don't have it, don't worry. You can make these without. Um, it just gives it a little bit of extra stiffness. Um, likewise, you can always quilt these as well if you're um, really into your sewing. There's nothing to stop you quilting it, but we won't do that today. And then obviously just your basic sewing tools. So I've got some clips, but you might want pins, depends what you use. I use a rotary cutter to do my cutting out, um, but if you um, use scissors, then you're gonna want your fabric scissors. 
um, a marking pen, um, although you don't have to have a removable pen, we're just going to be using this to draw around our template. So you can use a Sharpie if you really want to, or a biro or a pencil, it really doesn't matter, you're not going to see the lines, so don't panic. I've got my little embroidery scissors just to do a bit of snipping, and obviously my sewing machine is set up to the right of me here. Um, I've got another camera that I can put on when we're actually doing sewing, so you'll be able to see it up close and personal. So I'm just going to scroll through the comments just to make sure I've not missed anybody. Um, Nanny B, hi from Australia, it's 10.30 on Saturday night, Jeff's watching, hi Nanny B. Darcy's already, hi Celia, good to see you. Um, <laughs> and says, hi Carol, hi Darcy, hi And. Vicky from Alabama, US, just watching today. Mazara62 joining from France. Will not be sewing along, I'm afraid. My sewing machine's upstairs and my desktop computer is downstairs. And then Christine Phillips. Hey, mummy. <laughs> just watching. Lovely. Nice to see you. Okay, we'll keep the comments coming. I'm going to work um, at a fairly regular, easy pace today. Um, if you are, you know, really, really running behind, just stop me, stick a hands in the air symbol or something up in the comments and I'll try and slow down. Um, obviously I appreciate quite a few of you are at different levels and some of you are beginners. So let me talk you through the cutting out first of all. I'm going to do mine and you can do yours at the same time. So it's a simple process. Firstly you're going to take your patterned fabric and you're going to want to cut two of your template. Now I find the easiest way to do this if I've got a fabric that's quite dark like this one is to layer it up so it's double but I've layered it up so it's right sides together which means when I put my template on and draw around it I can see my pen markings because the fabric's slightly lighter in the back so that's what we're going to do so I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to draw around it and then you can use fabric scissors to cut that out if you're doing it this way I would suggest you draw around it once you remove your cardboard template, you put some pins through the fabric to hold the two together and then cut it out. That's how I usually cut out if I'm using scissors. I'm going to use a rotary cutter, so I'm going to be brave and I'm just going to use my rotary cutter straight up on my template. Now the other thing you can do if you're kind of semi-brave... <laughs> is you can draw around your template and then you can use a rotary cutter and a ruler to follow the lines. Um, so it really does depend how brave you are with your cutting and how experienced you are as to what you prefer to do. But obviously this is the quickest and easiest way but it doesn't suit everybody. two pieces from our pattern fabric and then you're going to want to go on and do two pieces from your lining fabric as well this is a big old bit of fabric I've got here now there is um, a website, a blog post that I've done with full written instructions for this tutorial as well so I will link that into the description after we finish today so that you've got the written instructions and the step-by-step -step techniques as well. I did actually do this as a YouTube video, so I'm going to stand up for this bit. Um, so there is a full video tutorial as well. I just thought it would be a fun thing to do as a bit of a sew along with you. So I've got two from my lining fabric and two from my outer fabric. I'll let you catch up, I'm just going to give mine a quick press. Don't panic about doing that right now unless you are ready. Obviously you have your iron ready to use. Right, 
it and once you're cut out just let me know in the comments a thumbs up or a smiley face or something good morning Laurieann 4 30 in the morning god you love me <laughs> Michelle says hi are we trying to keep up and says good morning good very early morning to you Laurieann indeed um, how long is the live so long likely to be? It obviously depends how long it takes people to sew. Probably, I wouldn't think no more than about an hour. Um, maybe an hour, hour and a half. Elspeth says, I'm watching while I make a mouse. Oh, bless you. Elspeth's probably needle felting. Hello, Angie and Elspeth. Hello to everyone around the world from Lorian in Oregon. Oh, wow. So we've got America, we've got Australia, we've got France, we've got... Two lots of America, Alabama and Oregon, and then Essex and Shropshire. Fabulous. Lots of you. Brilliant. Carol's giving me a thumbs up. And in Darcy, how are you going with your cutting? There's nothing boring about being in Essex, Cheryl. Nothing boring about Essex at all. Essex is a great place to be. Oh, we've got South Africa as well. Yes, of course you are, Celia. Hi, Kat. How are you? Are you sewing with us today? If so, you've got a quick bit of catching up to do. Let me know in the comments. If you are, you need to cut two pieces from your main outer fabric and two pieces from your lining fabric using your little template. I am very much international, Michelle. <laughs> Darcy's done. Laurieann says, you're not boring to me, Cheryl. I love Essex, fabulous. Okay, right, so once you've got your four pieces cut out, we're going to interface, if you've got interface, and if you haven't, just hold fire until the next step. But we're going to interface one of our outer pieces of fabric so we're going to decide which one we want to be the outer i like this big blue flower here on this one so i'm going to use this one for my outer and i'm going to set aside my other pieces just for a second now the way that i like to interface i don't cut a piece of interfacing perfectly to size i find that really quite annoying what I do is I lay my piece of fabric that I want to interface on top of my interfacing so that the wrong side of the fabric is attached to the rough, gluey side of the interfacing. And then I really rough cut around it. And I can do that with scissors or a rotary cutter. And then I grab an old tea towel or a piece of fabric and I place it onto my ironing board I'm not going to put it on the ironing board because obviously you can't see my ironing board but I place it onto my ironing board like so and then I flip it up so that the gluey part of my interfacing is touching my tea towel and then I press it with my iron. This means that I'm not gonna get any glue on the sole plate of my iron, which is, as we know, the worst thing that can possibly happen. You are then able to peel your fabric back off and you can then trim up and remove that excess interfacing. So that's the way I interface fabric. Obviously, if you do it differently, totally fine. Off you go, interface your outer piece just the one outer piece, leave the other piece to one side. I'm just using a lightweight woven interfacing because that's all I had to hand, but obviously the heavier the interfacing you've got, the stiffer um, your tea bag holder is going to be, your tea bag wallet's going to be. 
So if you use a stiffer version, it's going to just be a bit harder. So I'm going to now use my ruler, or you could put your template back on top, and I'm just going to trim off that excess interfacing from the edge. All right, keep me posted how you're going. You can put something like interfacing done, or ready, or what's next, into the comments. There we go. Oh, wow, your hire is watching from Doha. Fabulous, we really have got an international following today. Nanny B is going to make one in the morning, no worries. Cat's just cutting out, brilliant. <laughs> Jamie says, I've made this twice as gifts following Claire's excellent instructions on Pinterest, the tea drinkers, I know love them. They also hold sweeteners if you're tea drinkers like that. That's a good idea. You have a little packet of sweeteners. I'm terrible. I always take a load from cafes and things and keep them in my handbag. Good idea. Cut my interfacing slightly smaller than the fabric itself so there's no interfacing in the seam allowance. You can do that, but to be fair, um, because it's so thin, I'm not using um, a thick interfacing, so it really doesn't matter. Um, it won't make any difference. And that's a good idea about parchment paper as well. Ironing with parchment paper above and below to protect the iron in the ironing table. Good idea. Marlene says, give the live a thumbs up, guys. Yes, please do. Give it a thumbs up. The more thumbs ups um, I get on the live, the more YouTube will share it with people. Um, so, yes, lots of thumbs up, please. Done, done, done. Interfacing done. Brilliant. Okay. So, we're going to set that to one side. The next thing you're going to do is take your two lining pieces, your internal pieces, and you're going to fold them wrong sides together, or to be fair, if you're using a fabric like mine, don't really know what the wrong side and the right side, but you're going to fold them wick ways, like so, so that they become half the width, and go and give them a really good press on the iron, and you're going to want to use the steam so you get a really lovely fold, nice pressed fold line. Let me know once you're pressed, because we're going to start sewing. <laughs> That's a funny little emoji then. I think I finally worked out how to live stream both to Facebook, uh, both to YouTube and Facebook at the same time. Um, I'm going to get some help from a friend that does a lot of live streaming. Um, but I think um, I've worked out how. So for uh, the next live stream I do, I should be able to pump it straight into Facebook so you haven't got to go from Facebook to find YouTube, which is good. Honey's from Holland. Oh, what part of Holland are you from, Honey? Absolutely love the Netherlands. Right, it's probably going to be one of the first places I go back to as soon as I'm allowed. Lovely. Cat's pressed. That's great. How about the rest of you? Are you pressed? This is where Zoom's quite good because you can see what people are doing. Um, not relying purely on the comments, but it's good. Right, okay, good, good. Right, turn on your sewing machines. Hopefully you've already got your machine threaded. Oh, my machine was on already. 
<laughs> Hopefully you've already got your machines threaded. I've threaded mine in like a turquoise blue kind of colour um, that ties in nicely with both of my fabrics. I've got the same thread in the bottom and in the top of my machine. So I'm going to switch the camera angle, hopefully. There we go. Look at that. Fancy. And what we're going to do is we're going to be top stitching. Now this is just for making it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing more than anything. But we're going to top stitch all the way along this fold line. We're just going to leave our stitch setting on a regular stitch setting, just whatever length you usually use. Um, if you've got a computerised machine like I have, that's 2.4. Um, if you've got a manual machine, I would normally suggest about 2.5. Um, and we're going to just top stitch from one end to the other along the fold line. But you're not going to do any back tacks or anything like that. This is purely aesthetic. So I'll do one to show you. All I do is line up the right hand side of my presser foot with that fold line, put the needle down and I'm just going to sew all the way along keeping the edge of my presser foot in line with the fold. So that's now top stitched all the way along that fold line and I'm going to do that to both of my pieces. Let me know when you are stitched. Cheryl says, just watching today, got my embroidery machine going. Lovely. <laughs> Lazar62, what's your actual name? Because <laughs> I find it really hard using usernames. The ladies are giving us thumbs up in the comments to let me know that they have um, completed this particular step of the sew along so that I can move on to the next bit and I'm not rushing through but thank you yes it does also help if you use the um, the like icon the thumbs up icon um, on the video because that does help me um, get some good reach on YouTube so lovely let me know when you're top stitched Hi Lorraine, good to see you too. Thank you to everybody as well for all your lovely comments on um, my YouTube video I uploaded last night. It was really nice to uh, come back and see you all. Hopefully I'm out of my head fog now and uh, onwards and upwards. <laughs> Right, I'm just done. Brilliant. Okay, so once you've top stitched, we now need to position these two pieces of fabric onto our um, main fabric. Now, the interfaced one is the one we're going to use last, so put that to one side. We don't want to be using our interfaced piece just yet. You want to take your non interfaced piece first of all. Bernie says, my thread is screwed up, don't wait for me, I'll just watch. Don't worry, my lovely, you'll probably be able to catch up. Love the Netherlands, went to a quilt cafe and a bed and breakfast near Leeds. The ladies do a lot of hand piecing. I, no, 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 I'm thinking of Amsterdam. There's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful quilt shop where the ladies do lots and lots of hand piecing and I can't think what it's called. Um, it's just around the back of Dam Square and it's absolutely amazing. Um, it does a lot of the American um, country craft quilts. It's beautiful. Um, it's got a lovely fabric shop next door as well. Uh, right, anyway, I'm 
I'm digressing. So we've got our piece of main fabric, which isn't interfaced. Um, I've got that pattern side up on the table and I'm gonna take my first one of these little pockets and I'm going to place it about an inch, just roughly, up from the bottom edge. So this is the bottom edge of my fabric. This is my bottom raw edge of my little pouch bit and I'm going to place it about an inch up from the bottom. Now you can pin this in place if you want to, run your pins through the centre. I don't actually do any pinning, I just take this straight to the sewing machine and sew down. Um, but that's because I've made hundreds of these and I'm quite brave. The other thing you can do is just pop a couple of clips on either end just to hold it in place. So again, this is really going to depend how brave you are, if you're happy to just go for it or whether you want to clip it up. And what you're going to do is just run a little line of basting stitches. So you don't have to change the length of your stitch. You can just use your sewing machine as is. Um, but you're just going to run a little line of stitching um, fairly close to that raw edge. There's no specific seam allowance. It would probably be about one eighth if you were being specific. You're never going to see these stitches. They're there just to help you out. So I'll show you what I do and then you can do it yourself. So... Again, I'm going to pop it. I'm just going fairly close to the edge. I'm not using any real guide on my sewing machine. I'm just doing this by eye. I'm just going to run a little line of stitches. I'm not worrying about back tacks or anything else. Just a little line of stitches all the way along that bottom edge. Done. And that's just going to hold that first pocket in place for me. So go and stitch that in place and it will just flap around like so, but we're just going to stitch it along that bottom edge. Once you've done that, let me know. <laughs> Michelle says, I was like, oh wow, kept telling my husband to be quiet while I was watching you last night. <laughs> I just got really frustrated because it wasn't until I got home and edited it that I realised that after about a minute, the camera had gone completely out of focus and I was just all fuzzy almost the whole way through. But I was like, never mind, I'm not refilming it. <laughs> it won't be as raw and as natural if I refilm it. So I did as I did. Um... Lovely. No problem at all about the thumbs up. Yes, they are the two quilt shops in Amsterdam. They're absolutely beautiful, very different styles. Um, they have really strange opening hours though. Mazar62, what's your actual name? And then I can actually talk to you rather than use your username. <laughs> Lovely, cat's done, Darcy's done. Okay, brilliant. So once you've sewn that one, then you're going to take your other one and you're going to do exactly the same, but this time you're going to line up the raw edge with the raw edge at the bottom of your fabric and you're going to base that in place and again, you don't want your seam allowance to be any bigger than quarter of an inch because when we sew the whole thing together, you're going to be using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We don't want to see those stitches. So you do want to make sure with this one that you are coming in with, an, with a one eight seam allowance. But again, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit wobbly or a bit off centre. No one's going to see it, so it doesn't matter. It's there just to hold it in place. So we're just going to run a one eight guide down that bottom edge. Oh, 
all done. And otherwise, let me know when you're done. And it's back with us. Super. Good, good. Frighten myself there. It's telling me I've been live for an hour and I haven't, but I forgot I started the actual streaming software at 12 o'clock to make sure it was working. <laughs> it's all very clever and technical. I click on the emojis when the video lags, so I can't use it. It is a bit laggy anyway, Kat, don't worry. There's always a, a bit of a delay. Liz, no worries, will do. Okay, brilliant. Right, so what we're going to do now, we need to um, mark the central point. So you can see here, I've got a little line of stitching that runs down the centre um, to basically keep the tea bags separated. So the easiest way to do that is to actually fold your fabric in half. You can give it a finger press. If your fabric is stiff enough and it shows you a nice crease line like mine does, that's all you need. Um, but if you can't get a good finger press or a crease, um, then you can do it with the iron. Now I can see that quite clearly so I can follow that. But again, if you can't follow it, there's nothing to stop you using a removable pen and just drawing over that line with a ruler. Um, but as long as you can see it, that's the most important thing. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stitch down it. So let me just change the camera angle. So I'm going to start by putting my needle down. It's not going to show you very well. I'm going to put my needle down into my stitch line here. And I'm going to do a little forward and back tack. I'm not going to stitch up above this line because I don't think it looks neat. I'm going to put my needle in here. If you've got a lock stitch function on your machine, you can do a lock stitch if you want to, if you don't want an ugly back tack. Um, but if you don't have that, then just going to go forward and back here, and then you're going to sew all the way down to the bottom. When you get to here, be careful, because obviously your pocket's going to fold. You don't want to get it caught underneath the foot. So just make sure that you take this bit nice and slowly so you can keep sewing down. Alternatively, if you want to, you can start from the bottom edge and you can sew all the way up until your needle hits this mark and then do a little back tap. It's up to you how you prefer to do it. So I'm going to use a lock stitch. So I'm going to put my needle down at this point, press my little lock stitch button so my needle will go up and down five times a little knot and stop and then it will allow me to sew down all the way down the line to the bottom and I'm not going to do a back tack or anything at the bottom here I don't need to and I've just literally followed the line in the groove in the centre of my presser foot which has just allowed me to sew straight down that line. And then I'm going to use my scissors and just trim off the little thread from the top there. Okay, you can see that very clearly, but I've now stitched down the centre. Let me know when you're done. Now I find the best way, if you are going to make these to sell or if you are going to make them as gifts, the best way to make them is to batch make them. Um, and I used to do that whenever I did um, crafts. 
for craft fairs. So I would literally cut out about 50. Um, and then I would do each step. So I'd do all my pressing. I'd press all of these bits in half. Then I'd top stitch all of them. Um, and I always tried to use fabrics that had similar colours. <laughs> I didn't have to keep changing the threads. Um, but if you batch make them, then it's just a really good way of creating lots of things at one time. Lorraine says, I love your top. I knew someone would mention my top. Every time I wear this jumper, people comment on it. I absolutely love it. No, I didn't make it, Lorraine. It's from Sheen or Sheen, however you pronounce it. I think they still sell it. Um, it's just a jumper, but it's really, I like it because it's got the pink cuffs. Um, but yeah, a little bit different and I really like it. I think it was about 20 quid. I love it. Um, all done, brilliant. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach our little elastic. Now this bit is a little bit fiddly. I would suggest you watch first and then go and do, okay? Don't try and sew along with me. Um, so you're gonna want your bubble. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold it in half. So mine's got a little, um, like a join in it. You might have a little metal bit if you have, but just try and fold it so you've got the rubbishy bit um, at this end. And we're going to be positioning it in line with our top fold of our bottom pocket. But we're going to position it so it's coming in, the majority of the loop is coming into the tea bag wallet. And what we're going to do to stitch this in place is we're going to baste it in at one eighth. Now I'm going to just change the camera angle so I can show you on the machine. And as I say, I would suggest you watch and then do. Um, because we're going to use our needle as a pin. And we're going to try not to soak through our fingers. Now I don't know how well this is going to focus. Let me see if turning the lights off on this makes a difference. It might be a bit too bright. Oh no. No, it doesn't make any difference. But we're going to use our needle. So when we put our presser foot down, we want to try and put our needle down so it goes through the first top part of our elastic and it's going to kind of pin it in place. So I'm going to put my needle down. There we go. So my needle's gone into that top fold of my elastic. I've got my presser foot down and what I'm actually gonna do is use my little embroidery scissors to shove the bottom part of my elastic right up close so that it's pushed up against the needle so that when I start sewing, which I'm not gonna do with my scissors under there, when I start sewing, it should just keep it together and I can baste it in place, go slowly just do two or three stitches over that bobble and then use your back tack to sew back over it again. The aim of the game is you're going to sew this in at about one eighth. So you can see there I've just gone forward and back. You can just see those stitches, I think. Yep, forward and back. And I've got those pushed, those two bits pushed fairly close together. There is a little bit of air there, but not a lot. Um, and I've got a bit of manky loop, or you might have a little metal bit hanging out this end. You can trim that off, um, but I wouldn't do that yet. But you just want to go forward and back over that bobble at one eighth just to hold it in place. But if you use your needle like a pin so that it goes down into that top piece of elastic and then you can shove the bottom bit up close to it before you sew. So give that a go. Take it slowly. If need be, you can use your hand wheel on your machine. You don't even have to do it with the foot pedal. Um, if you're worried that you're going to break a needle. All right, off you go. social media proof mm. 
and then there's about a three minute lag I think on this looking at the difference between my two screens as I do that when making NCWs. What part do you do that on, Kat? I've been using the scissors to shove up. Challenge done. Yeah. Okay, so once you've got that basted in place, as I say, we're not going to snip off that little bit just yet, we will do, um, but not till later, we'll make sure that if we do it now, it just puts stress on the elastic and it's likely to potentially come out, so we'll just leave it be. Um, but now what we're going to do is take our interface panel and we're going to place it right sides together over the top of our lining panel and we are going to just pin or clip it together again I don't normally I just hold it in place um, but that's because I have made so many of these over the years that I am quite practiced but I don't know how many I've made I would say hundreds they used to be one of my biggest sellers when I did the Leon C vintage and handmade fair mum will tell you she used to help me and I used to sell loads of them. They're about, I think they're about £5.50, so I used to do all right. Now we're going to sew it all the way round here, <clears throat> but we are obviously going to leave an opening to be able to turn this in the right way. And I find the best place to leave the opening, if you've got your bobble here on the right hand side, is actually up here in the top right hand side. So if you imagine that you had an imaginary fold line down the middle, I'm just going to draw that on with a pen. If you imagine you had an imaginary fold line down here, putting your gap up here means that when we sew it closed later with a top stitch, um, our gap is going to end up on the back section because this is going to fold over. So if you want to mark the gap, you can either do it with some pins or do it with a pen. Um, mark a gap I've left about an inch and a half to two inches on the back section here. We're going to then start sewing here and we're going to sew all the way around with a quarter of an inch seam allowance until we get back to the other side of our marking and I'm going to put a back tack at the start and at the end just to reinforce those seams. Um, I'm going to sew with a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around and I'm going to make sure that I pivot on each of the corners. So for those of you who know what I'm talking about feel free, crack on, um, but if you want to actually watch me do it I'm going to do it now. All right. So, as I say, I'm starting here at the, the finishing part of my marking. My sewing machine is set, um, so if I use the edge of my press foot on the edge of my fabric, I get a rough quarter of an inch seam allowance, so that suits me. So I'm going to put my needle down and I'm going to do a couple of stitches forward and a couple of stitches backwards just to secure it. And then I'm going to sew until I'm a quarter of an inch away from this bottom corner. Now I can do that by eye because I do a lot of sewing but if you need to you can always make a little mark with a pen so that you're a quarter of an inch away from either of the raw edges that's where you're going to be stopping and you want to make sure that when you stop you stop with your needle down so that you can do a pivot turn which basically means lifting up your presser foot and pivoting your fabric on the needle by a quarter of an inch and putting your presser foot back down again which gives you a nice neat turn on the corner 
from the inner side all the way down over that bobble. When you get to the bobble, you can always do a little back tack just to secure it in and then go back over it again. That just helps hold it in place. You don't have to, but you can. And then again, you're going to sew right the way down until you're a quarter of an inch away from that bottom corner. Pivot and turn. Then we're going to sew all the way along the bottom edge. Until we're a quarter of an inch away from the corner again. Pivot. Oh dear, have we frozen? Something's gone funny. That camera's gone really weird. Is it just me? Okay. That's okay, isn't it? Can you still hear and see me? Is it just that camera that's going funny? Yeah, it's just that camera. Okay. It's frustrating. Let me turn it off and on again. <laughs> One second. There we go. Okay. We're good again. Just going to let the lag catch up. Just give me a thumbs up. <laughs> okay, you can see you're all on there, that's fine. No, the camera just was having a bit of a hissy fit. It seems to be okay. I had stopped sewing um, because I didn't know what it was doing, so I'm going to carry on now. So I've just turned my third corner and I'm going to keep sewing down until I'm a quarter of an inch away from the top edge. Pivot again. And then this time I'm going to sew down until I reach the other side of my marking, my other opening. And I'm going to do a back tack when I reach it. And then I am done. So I've sewn all the way around. I've left my opening and I've pivoted a quarter of an inch on all of my corners. So, let me know when you are done. Gotta love technology, haven't we? <laughs> Switch it off and on again. Okay, so once you've sewn all the way around and you've left your opening, what we want to do is remove the bulk from the corners. So that simply means cutting as close as you can to your stitch line without cutting the stitches. You don't want a hole in the corner of your tea bag wallet and you're just going to snip off that little triangle without cutting your stitches. That's going to just help you get neater corners when we turn everything in the right way. And at this point, you can also remove your little bit of elastic. Now, if you want to, you can cut in a little bit, just a little bit, not too close to the stitch line, but just to remove the bulk 
there and to get rid of that last little bit of elastic. There we go, but obviously we need to have a little tiny little tail end hanging out or the whole thing's going to fall apart. And then I'm going to get a chopstick because I knew there was something I didn't have. One second. And you can then turn your tea bag wallet in the right way. Now, you've not left a massive hole, so it isn't the easiest thing to do. What I tend to do is push through the corner that's closest, first of all. And then the rest kind of comes through with it. You can obviously leave a bigger hole, but the bigger hole you leave, the more you've got to close up later. So. Once you get going though, it tends to come through okay. And it's at that point you can get a chopstick in to help you. Don't be afraid if you've done your pivot turns properly, you should be able to really get in there into those corners. Now all you're going to want to do is give it a really good press. If you've got a fray fabric like I have, you know, trim off any ends. Give it a really good press, but the important thing is to make sure that your edges in your hallway opening were are turned in really nice and neatly so that they're really beautifully pressed and they sit really nicely on top of each other. Because we're going to run a line of top stitching around this tea bag wallet in a minute, that in doing so is going to end up closing that opening. So pressing at this point so that they're really beautifully aligned is really important. So I'm going to take this over to my iron and I'm going to give it a load of steam. and just make sure those corners are really nicely poked out. All right, so once you're pressed all the way round, then you're going to top stitch it. So let's go back to this camera. Now our opening is here. So what I like to do is start just behind my opening so that way so my opening's here in my right hand you can see i start just behind it so i can do my little back tack here and then i can make sure that that's nice and neatly closed now i'm going to top stitch with a one eighth seam allowance so i'm going to do my little back tack sew across my opening first so that's done nice and neatly and again, we're going to do pivot turns the whole time. But we need to be careful as we come down this side that we don't catch the pocket. So take it nice and slowly. And if need be, you can use your hand wheel. You might need to put your hand behind when you get to the bobble and just give it ever such a gentle pull as you go along, just to help it. That will depend on your machine. And again, pivoting on each of the corners. If you get to the corner and it's a bit hard, just give it a bit of a just to help it. 
or manually turn that hand wheel. Now, if you were to sew this at quarter of an inch, your hole would not get closed, so do bear that in mind. So we're doing the one eight seam allowance. And when you get back to where you started, to your little back tack, you don't need to do another back tack, but just sew a few stitches over it. That way you know that it's all nice and secure and it's not going to come undone. And that's what I was saying earlier about your little back tack where your double stitching is, it's going to end up on the back of your tea bag wallet when you close it. So I'm just going to trim those threads off now. And then I'm going to fold my tea bag while it closed and I'm actually going to go and give the fold line a blast of steam. you all want to let me know in the comments when you've got that far. Put your nail polish colour. Thank you, Ange. It's um, not actually nail polish. I've been using that dipping powder to uh, keep my extensions. I've been doing them myself through lockdown. It's taken me a year, but I think I finally mastered it. <laughs> But the dipping powder is actually a glittery dipping powder and it's actually because of the glitter, it's stronger. So I find it lasts longer and it's less. You don't break, I don't break quite so many. I use my scissors when I'm closed. What do you mean, Michelle? <laughs> it's a pretty print, isn't it, Liz? This is the very last of, um, I think I've still got a little bit of it in the shop. Might have like half a metre, but I had a, a big piece that I used to make masks with um, right early on in lockdown. It's very nice. Right, let me know how you're getting on everyone. That's done. Brilliant. Okay. So the only final thing to do is to stitch our button on. So what you're going to want to do is with it closed, you take your elastic and just bring it over and give it a tiny weeny stretch. Not a lot, but just a tiny weeny stretch because what we want to bear in mind is once this has got tea bags in it, it's going to be a little bit fatter. So you're just going to give it a little tiny stretch and then you should be able to see where your button's going to want to be positioned. So you're going to want to be stitching your button and this, the holes are going to want to be where the loop of your button is. So you can just use a pin and make a little mark, or you can use a friction pen and make a little mark, just so you know where your button's going to want to be stitched. And then using, obviously, a needle and thread, you can stitch your button in place. Now, the important thing to remember here, do not stitch all the way through, because otherwise you're going to be shutting your pockets and you're not going to be able to put your tea bags in so it's important I normally put my finger into that top pocket here so that I know when I'm stitching my button on I'm only stitching through the two layers of my main fabric it also means that the the messy untidy part where the button stitched on will be inside this top pocket 
so we're just going to stitch our button on through this part I'm not going to do mine right now I'm actually going to be lazy and leave it and do it a little bit later but you're going to stitch it through both the layers of that main fabric which means you can then pull your elastic around your button and your tea bag wallet is completed so bear with bear with just going to boom myself full screen ah there we go <laughs> you should now all have a beautiful little tea bag holder whether you stitch your button on right now or whether you do it a little bit later is up to you i'm going to hang around for a second to see any comments that come up any questions that i might be able to answer for you and then i want to see all of you who make one of these post a lovely picture somewhere on the tinter webs um, either Instagram or Facebook and please share a link to this song along um, so that other people can make it too. Michelle posted the comment when you went looking for the chopstick. Ah oh, right okay Liz yeah points of your scissors. Oh, my scissors are too sharp to do that with. I would actually go through the fabric if I use that. Um, the scissors because I really do with my chopstick I give it a really good bit of welly. Um, <laughs> I like that you mentioned some of the problems that can arise stitching the button through too many layers. Yeah, that's how I teach, Liz. If you've not done any of my courses or my tutorials before, um, then I'm very much one of these people. I've made the mistakes, and so therefore I'm able to advise you not to make the mistakes. Um, in the words of the lovely Sean from Kittenish Behaviour, ask me how I know. Um, <laughs> that is very much how I teach. Um, so lots of my regular ladies who are here with me today will attest to that. I am sure Rebecca says, yay. Um, thanks, Claire. That was great. No problem, Carol. Um, and just doing her button. Love the sew along. Brilliant. Right. I'm going to do another sew along. I think I'm going to do it next Saturday. I'm not sure. I need to um, work out my plans. Um, because it's Mother's Day next weekend and I don't know what my plans are with my children um, and or my mum. Um, but I will work that out over the next couple of days. But I might do it next Saturday. If I don't do it next Saturday, I will do it the week after. I thought I would make a hook roll or a brush roll. So it's like you could use it for crochet hooks or you could use it for makeup brushes. Or you could use it for paint brushes, for knitting needles or felt it pens, um, so some kind of like rolly case. Um, if you like that idea, let me know. Otherwise, if there's something else you would like me to do, um, let me know too. I want to try and do lots of these sew-alongs so that they form like a tutorial um, category in my on my YouTube. Um, I prefer doing them this way rather than um, just as tutorials. Tutorials on their own can be a bit boring. Um, but I also don't want to do anything too hard that I would rather do as an online course. So it does need to be something super simple. So let me know what you fancy doing. Um, <laughs> Liz says it's been great. We'll run upstairs and make one or 20. Yeah, they're addictive. Sorry. Um, Laurie Ann says, I love how you teach. Well done, Claire. Keep up the great work. Hugs. Hugs to you too, my lovely. Um... Lovely Saturday on afternoon activity, thank you Darcy, hoping to come and visit so Cheryl when we get back to some sort of normal, we would love to have you Cheryl, um, the doors will be flung so wide this summer, it's untrue, I can't wait to have you in, yes please, yes please, great idea, brilliant tutorial, great for my confidence, glad you enjoyed it Bernie, um, Fantastic, says Kat, want to make one of those for my besties? Yes, please, great idea. Okay, crochet hook, well, it is then. Um, although I should just call it a roll <laughs> because you can use it for anything. Um, brilliant. Okay, lovely. I'm going to love you and leave you. Thank you so much for taking part, everybody. As always, please share this tutorial or this video. Um, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do. All those things really help um, raise my profile, which is fantastic. If you haven't joined my free Facebook group, the link is in the description. Um, what else can I tell you? Not a lot. 
Um, <laughs> I'll be back soon. I am about to head out and climb some trees in the Buffalo Woods. I will see you soon. <laughs> bye bye.